Welcome everyone to the Chicago Football Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Letizia. Follow me on Twitter at CFC Bears. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Luke O'Grady. Follow him on Twitter at Luke O'Grady. We're talking free agency today uh, with free agency starting next week, Monday. The legal tampering period starting on Monday. Teams have not had any conversations with agents or players at all up until Monday at noon, whenever that starts. So we obviously have to talk when about does that. The, when does the illegal tamp- tampering period start? I think the illegal tampering tampering period is the other 364 days. Of the yeah, period. I would say like uh, 12. Yeah, probably. So yeah, so we, it started on Monday. So I got to ask Luke, how are you feeling going into the weekend before the probably the most important free to see of our lifetime as Bears fans? How are you feeling? Uh Wow, I never really thought about it like that. I don't even know if I agree. This free agency period, honestly, isn't as important, honest, I would say, as like maybe next would be, especially if we prove this year that like Justin Fields is the guy. That's but if fair. you're going to get the draft right, you need to make sure that you're not going into the draft like with des- like with any like disparity or like like being desperate mm-hmm. at certain positions. And that's what you need to make sure we're doing in the, in the in free agency. And that kind of seems like what it's been, what Poles' thing is, you know what I mean? Like, he seems like he's a guy that, like, is going to try and find those deals to just fill holes or maybe have, like, a really good backup if they can't fill it in a better way. But he's going to get a good deal on the guy. He's going to have a bunch of reasons why. It'll be like he checks the boxes physically or he's young or he can get a one-year deal on him. But, I mean, that doesn't mean there isn't probably three or four, like, especially with the money we have. There are probably three or four real crown jewels the Bears are going to go after this free agency period. And it'll probably be the most fun we'll have in free agency our whole lifetime. I I don't know if there'll ever be a time when the Bears will have this much cap space clean of the next person. Yeah. I mean, I always go back to that free agency where on the first day we signed Julius Peppers, and that was insane. But I don't know if we're going to do that. First of all, there's not a Julius Peppers in this free agency class. I feel like overall it's a pretty weak one. Unfortunately, as you mentioned, the Bears have to spend a ton of money. But I agree with you. Free agency is meant for filling holes. It's not really meant for finding you know, those long-term pieces. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what their strategy is because kind of those two dichotomies are kind of uh, – you know, backwards. So uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what they do. But I do agree with you. I think I think their Bears are going to go with a quantity over quality approach. They'll sign they'll sign some big guys for sure, just because yep. they have to. But I feel like they're also going to just sign a lot of that second and third tier guys to like yep. decent contracts. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is when the numbers start rolling in, and everyone goes to Twitter and say says, "Holy shit, what a huge overpay for that guy!" It's free to see. It's always an overpay. None of the contract. I mean, not well, not none of the contracts, but a lot of that is not guaranteed money. So you really got to look at the guaranteed money. Yeah. Um, so we'll and see. We'll, it'll be interesting. Contracts too. We have so much money this year that it's like we could give someone that's worth yeah. fifteen million a year. We could give them twenty million this year, and if someone's like, "You paid five million over," you go, "Ah, oh, whatever." You know, we had right. to spend the money this year. Right. Yeah. Front load contracts. Uh, exactly. Definitely. That's the strategy. You got to think that's the strategy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just kind of because you got. And also the thing is, you know, we I, we talk about spending money, but there's also going to be some extensions in there. Cole Komet's probably going to get extended. Yeah. Jalen Johnson's on the table to get expend, extended. Darnell Mooney, too. So those mm-hmm. three guys are guys to look at. I think Cole Komet's pretty locked up to probably get extended, but the other two have, been, have a have a chance as well. I mean, and there's also guys that are hitting free agency from our team. That are it's worth talking about, you know. Kerry Blasen game, for example, we just that's big extension mm-hmm. just came in. Yeah. For those for those that you know probably aren't aware, that's our fullback. <laughs> and it's actually pretty good. He had a good year for us. Yeah. It was one of those things where the when he was in the game, there was a sizable difference in the benefit we saw in yards and points added from like you know yeah. a big data point of view. He was always a really, really big positive for our offense, so it's good to have him back. There was a couple of okay. players I was drafting when I was doing mock drafts, assuming that he wasn't coming back, just because I knew how valuable that position itself was seeming to be in this offense. But I think always the best option was to bring him back. Yeah, no, that that is, I think, an under-the-radar sign. And I honestly, because you're right, he did play well last year, and I honestly think that they didn't use him as much as they initially intended to use him as well because we saw how – different the offense was at the beginning of the year and then once you know that that mini buy hit how the offense changed so much it kind of phased out the fullback a little bit um and i think and i think they want to be more of that fullback outside zone team so if they get better uh, offensive linemen around them 
did you see yeah, the PTI interview where uh, uh, the um, what's his name PFT was like um, was like ah oh, you know why do you think the fullback's dying in the NFL and Eber Flus like we use a fullback we love our fullback. <laughs> I actually have not listened to that yet. It's on my it list good. of things to listen to, but yeah, I definitely got to do that. Man, uh, yeah, doing the rounds, eh? Yeah, he's media blitzing right now, and I he love has. it. He's the like, GM that goes on he, podcasts. Yeah, yeah, but he's on part of my take, and like I maybe know. he'll come on this podcast next. Who knows? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll get polls. I, I, we got some polls. polls. I know you're listening. Like, come on the podcast. You got some ideas, uh, man. Yeah, I ran like 15 mock drafts. Just Seriously, today. I, I've been, I I've been this. doing this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so what do you say we get into some of the, the individual players? Sure. Uh, so we're going to start – we're we're not going to – it's going to be kind of a loose format here. We're going to start with the offense, though. That's that's the only format we're doing right now, and then we'll go get to the defense. Let me – yeah, so, let me hit you with one. Let's start with – All right, uh, let's, let's do start it. with internal. Okay. Let's talk about uh, – let's talk about David Montgomery. All right. Well, Bears, I'm going to hide that person. The Bears have a hole at that mm-hmm. second running back position. Um, Khalil Herbert's going to be the guy next year for sure. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is that the hole that David Montgomery creates is a hole that David Montgomery would be a perfect fit for. We need a third down running back that can pass, block, receive, and also run hard. Now, he yeah. doesn't exactly run the zone scheme like we run, as well as Herbert. Probably not even really close. But yeah. losing him, we're losing that dynamic to our team. The pass, block, and the receiving back, which he's yeah. gotten better at every year that he's been a bear. Yep. Yeah, I I 100 percent agree. I like the way you word that too. We're, we're try, trying to fill his spot with someone that he could fill that spot with. It's just weird to say, but I do agree. I think they are going to go a different direction there. But yeah, you are missing his his uh, pass catching ability, pass blocking ability. Clear Herbert has not shown that at all. He's not only not shown that he's been a, a negative in both those regards. Yeah. Um. So you definitely need a guy to compliment him. But I do think, like you said, they're happy with Khalil Herbert kind of being that lead lead back on first and second down. Yep. Um, so they got to find a third down back. I don't know who that's going to be. I, you know, is it Dave? Maybe they bring David Montgomery back. It's, I'm not going to rule it out. It's not a 0% possibility. Miles Sanders is a free agency. Yep. Don't, you know, he's, you can fill that role a little bit. I'm not thrilled about that either. Uh, you know, a lot of the big name guys got tagged, Barkley, Pollard, uh, Jacobs, so you're not going yep. that direction, uh, which is probably a blessing in disguise because honestly, paying running backs big contracts rarely works out, if ever. So, um, we might have even dodged a bullet there, but they're um, so but yeah, I we'll, we'll see. Do you, I mean, do you think there's any chance that they bring him back or do you think they're just moving on? I mean, I, honestly, I think it boils down to if they offer him something. Because I think David yeah. Montgomery said that if he gets an offer, as long as it's not like a disrespectful thing, like he kind of wants to be a bear. So it's it's yeah. it's a matter of if they think that, you know, if, if they can make a number that works, you know, we say all the time we have money to spend. But to some extent, we can't be saying that and like ushering that principle with every position running back specifically. So yeah. if it's too much, you know, you might need to say, hey, it, it might make more sense for like the Jags or the Lions or something. But yeah. if, if we can offer him $8 million a year or, you know, $7.5 million a year for three years and he's willing to come back, that I would I would be fine with it. As long, cause as, long yeah. as you frame it and say, hey, you know, you know, you don't need him to be the best runner on the team. You need him to be a good third down running back, a good teammate. He can still make a big play for you. You, you know, you'd be tripping if you think Dave Montgomery is a bad running back. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to pull up the PFF because they have the contract projections, and I trust those better than what I can come up with my, off the top of my head. So three years, six and a half million per year. Yeah, I'd be fine with that contract if they wanted to give exactly. him that. Um, if they, but I think Poles has kind of shown that you know he mentioned he likes David Montgomery, he loves David Montgomery the person. He, they just have to you know find a middle ground on the price, and he did the same thing with Roquan and linebacker and running back, kind of similar. They positions. are, aren't they? They've had like, such a like, funny like. They yeah. used to be the stars of their like respective right. sides of the ball. And now it's like, well, we can't pay them. It's like, what? Yeah, exactly. So like, I think he's going to want to go with just like a cheap option or maybe a, a mid round draft pick or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's what it, I would it, imagine. If it's not David Montgomery, I don't think f- financially you could argue yeah. that anybody else here is worth that money unless it's someone at like a two or $3 million evaluation. And then at yeah, that I mean, point, I, we'll likely see the backup be, you know, a, a draft pick. 
Yeah, I mean, are you going to sign Miles Sanders for more money? I don't think so. Well, who, who, who do they have below? Is he the last one? Yeah, let's see. So Devin Singletary is not a bad option. Um, I actually do kind of like that. He's kind of like a Walmart David Montgomery. Like he kind of he can pass block, he can receive out of the backfield a little bit. Um, I always liked him. I actually really liked him coming out of college uh, at, from yeah. Florida, Florida Atlantic. Like a few, when it was same uh, draft class as, as Montgomery. Um, so I really like him. I think he'd be a decent option. He was obviously cheaper, uh, about the same age. Jamal, I don't know. Kareem Hunt maybe. He's a good you know a third down back. Oh Amy man, Hannes, you know what? It's Jeremy Kinnon. Do like you know? I think to some extent, it's really just a matter of valuation versus like all of these guys. Like first, I think Damian Harris at that rate doesn't make any sense. That he, yeah. If the like, you know, Damian he, Harris to me is too similar to uh, Khalil Herbert. I feel like I agree. I, like, I yeah. actually it's just surprising to me that they're asking that Damian Harris wouldn't be asking for money more than Devin Singletary. Either way, I think yeah. you know you kind of say, hey, with the money the Bears have, you could put maybe like. A, a five to six to maybe seven million dollar per year value on it and go find whatever running back you think is the best fit in free agency. Yeah. Maybe like a, even a Raheem Moser would probably be fine. I mean, you yeah, still no one year deal. I like Alexander Madison too. It's not a bad pickup. It's all just about, it's, I think we would agree that when it comes to the running back position, it's just not about the first tier. Yes. Yeah. It's about okay, the unless- guys. You know, Khalil Herbert is your guy. You don't need another guy. He can run the ball as good, at least in the scheme that we're running, as anybody that you could want in the NFL. Maybe there's five guys better than him. But if that's your yeah. case, you're doing good. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't expect a big signing here. Uh, I think if the biggest contract they would give to a running back is if they brought Dave Montgomery back. And if they don't bring Dave Montgomery back, I think they go cheap. Not cheap, but they go with, you know, a lesser, less expensive guy. And then the mid-round draft pick that we're talking about it is a deep running back class. So you can get someone in the fourth, fifth round who probably who can contribute on third down. Um, you know, especially if you're just if you're not relying on them being a bell cow running back, which we don't yeah. need to do. You just need them to fill a role. Um, hopefully, you know, trust maybe they really believe in Justin Ebner too. Who knows? Uh, we'll oh, see about that. <laughs> All right. That'd be surprising. All right. Do you want to? Uh, let's go to. Uh, I want to jump around a bit. I want to go to tackle because I think. Yep. This, uh, is, a this is a really interesting tackle class. Uh, there are actually some people worth signing a tackle, and the Bears have a huge need at right tackle. And it just so happens that the top, I think, four offensive tackles here are all right tackles. Um, Except so Orlando I, Brown. Oh, uh, that's true. He is a left tackle. That's true. But he, I, I mean, I wish he would just play at right tackle. But yeah. Um, We'll, we'll I, guess, I didn't know this. I guess his father played left tackle for the Ravens. Yes, and he so wanted left to play tackle left tackle. tackle. Was, yeah. So once yeah. I learned that, I was like, all right, you know what, man, do your thing. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, how that, I, I, I still think he's in consideration. I think, um, you know, I I would say it's 100% certainty that the Bears are going to sign one of these four guys. Yeah. I, would I, say. I feel very confident about that. I would just say that I think – uh, if there was anything, the overarching thing that you can expect going into this free agency, it's what you can probably expect from this Bears team for the next couple of years, just being that the two biggest decision makers in this organization came from the Chiefs and they came right. from the Eagles and Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham. You can expect a lot of their capital in the draft and free agency to be thrown at the line of scrimmage. They're going to take shots at you know uh, yeah. the interior and the offensive line. They're going to get themselves some kind of tackle at the very least for competition. But I would expect they're signing, a, like you said, a right tackle from this top four to be their starter next year. And you can expect right. the same to be true of the draft. We've said a lot that, you know, if if, if we trade down, we love Justin Jackson, Smith, and Jigwood. I think that makes a lot of sense. But I think people would be like, you know, the, you'd be confused to think that with if we trade down to a position where we're still holding a fairly elite pick, that Poles and Cunningham wouldn't be looking to, you know, spend that on one of the players in the trenches. Yeah, I wouldn't rule it out at all. Paris Johnson, Roger Jones, uh, yeah. Peter Skaronsky, uh kind yeah. of depends on what – I wouldn't rule that out in the first round at all. Um, I know they like Jackson Smith and Jim. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the defensive side of the ball too, for sure. Um, So I think this is – one of the reasons I find this tackle class so interesting is because I think, one, one, they'll sign one of these four guys pretty early on in free agency. And two, I think whoever they do sign kind of lets you know their game plan for how they want their offense to be. Dude, you know, if, they, point. if they sign Mike McGlinchey or Caleb McGarry, they're going to be that power run, not power run, but they're going to be a run heavy team in the outside zone. If they sign Jawan Taylor, they're probably 
you know, going to be airing the ball out a little bit more. Yeah. He's a pass okay. blocker. Yeah, so this is actually good. We should probably frame this for people that are wa that are watching this and don't get it. So you can see here, like, look at the the grades as far as PFF is concerned yeah. for McGlinchey and for uh, Orlando Brown. Um, those are really well rounded tackles. Uh, Brown, the reason he's at the top of this list is because he's an amazing pass blocker. He's probably one of the better pass blocking tackles in the league, and that is kind of the theme that Bears Twitter and I would imagine Bears. Uh, brass is having this offseason where there's a kind of a divide with these tackles where if you look at McGlinchey's grades, he's an all right pass protector and a really, really good run blocker. And the same mm -hmm. is true of McGarry if you scroll down. Um, yeah. But then when you get to Juwan Taylor, you see a lot of yellow. And people mm -hmm. will be like, okay, well, why is he worth this pick? Because, yeah, he's actually pretty brutal at the run game and to some extent he's getting worse he isn't he hasn't made strides in that category but on us on a true pass set basis juan taylor over the last couple of years at right tackle has right tackle has been one of the most consistent pass blocking tackles in the league now at this point in the nfl there's a lot of data saying that you pass to win and what steve means when he says that it'll give us a lot of information is that if they're willing to forego you know, more well-rounded tackles because they're not going to get priced out of any of these tackles market. If they're willing yeah. to forego those options to go with a tackle that maybe is, is you could argue is fully bad at one aspect of their game to make sure that he's anchored at the more important aspect of the game. It'll tell us a lot about the way they see the team because mm -hmm. to some extent, Eberflus is this really raw, raw football guy. And we've heard some discourse about maybe Poles and Eberflus disagreeing about some things about that. And if we get a move like a Juwan Taylor versus a McGlinchey or versus a Caleb McGarry, it would be that, you know, more modern, maybe even analytics driven side of the football that Poles and Cunningham would probably be like heading up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that you, I couldn't, you took the words right out of my mouth. Like that was a perfectly said. Um, I think it also sets you up. Uh, kind of tells you who they're going to be targeting in the draft too. Exactly. You know, if they sign Jawan Taylor, they're probably going to draft or maybe get a wide receiver high because they're going to be throwing the ball more. If they sign a Caleb McGarry, maybe they you know go with the trenches again or go with the defense because they're going to be a run the ball first, you know, control the clock type team. Yeah. Hopefully they. I mean, I don't know if I really have a preference. I keep going back and forth on who I really want here. I think it's Jawan Taylor because I, like you said, you pass the ball to win in the NFL. Yeah. If you can't pass the ball, you can't win. And he's the best pass blocker of, out of all of these. I keep going back and forth in Orlando Brown because there's a, I had, think, yeah, there's a lot had success. Had about the Orlando Brown thing. And I think me and you, like we said, we're thinking about maybe doing like a mock free agency once we go through these. So we can kind of get into this a little bit later once we decide to make our decision. But what you need to understand about Orlando Brown is if you sign him, he's going to play left tackle. And that isn't mm -hmm. the hole that the Bears have. And that's right. that's kind of the problem why, because there's no doubt he's the best tackle available. He is, when he's playing good, probably one of the best pass blocking tackles in the league. Maybe Lane Johnson or, or Trent Williams have him edged, but he is that like he's in that echelon. He's kind of always been a bit of a uh, an average to maybe below average run blocker. He's not exactly athletic, which doesn't fit the Bears yeah. need anyway. But like you said, in, in the 21st century playing football, you need someone that can defend, like can block for your quarterback on true pass sets. And Orlando Brown can do nothing if not that. Yeah, I do think his athleticism was why I keep going back and forth on him. I mean, he's probably one of the more unathletic tackles in the in the entire NFL. Yeah, he's a bad uh, athlete. Yeah, he's, a bad, he's just a bad athlete. And again, that goes back to their run scheme with the outside zone. If you're running the ball a lot, you're going to need small, quick, athletic offensive linemen. But if you're transitioning and you're planning on throwing the ball more, maybe you won't really met care if he's not the greatest athlete because he can pass block. Um, he's he's huge. He he's just he wins with length and and his size rather than with us athleticism. Um, and you don't really you know if he's a li slight liability in your run scheme, you can live with that. So I don't know. I don't know. The other thing is you know I know he wants to play left tackle, but the Bears have a lot of money. <laughs> they can give him a couple extra million. Maybe he kicks back over to right tackle, or maybe they think uh, Braxton Jones can, can play right tackle. Um, so yeah, who knows? that's a, that's a, that's been a pretty popular topic of discussion on Bears Twitter this week. We can get into that when yeah. we do the other ones. We got some other positions we got to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. We can keep moving. Um, what do you want to go next? You want to go wide receiver, interior offensive line? What are you thinking? Yeah, we can go wide receiver pretty quickly because I think to some extent yeah. we agree that the wide receiver is similar to that of what we were saying about the running back. 
Yeah. There really isn't the top end talent, at least not for the money it's probably going to take to spend. Not to mention, if you're going to do it, it has to be like we said, you know, we you, you probably want to go either like superstar or like value deal in the back end. And this, unless someone like a Michael Thomas, where you're taking like a flyer deal on someone comes loose, I would say we'd both agree that a wide receiver signing for the Bears and free agency would look something more like maybe a DJ Chark. I think some people have been talking about McCole Hardman. I don't, mm. I don't know if that's much different than the Byron Pringle signing last year, but I think for the same reason, I'd be totally fine with it. It'd be low risk, high upside. Some of the Justin yeah. Fields has familiarity with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I agree. I don't see them signing. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jacoby Myers, just because he's going to cost a lot of money. I'm not sure if he's that. I mean, he probably is better than, than Claypool, at least what we've seen from Claypool so far. But I just don't eyes, I think, are better. But the real yeah. thing with, with Jacoby Myers is he play. He's an outside receiver, and Pool Claypool and Mooney are both better from the outside. We really need to go yeah. get someone that can make a difference in the slot. Yeah, and you you mentioned Mike Thomas. I really liked Michael Thomas, but it sounds like the Saints are going to restructure his contract, yep, unfortunately. That well. So that that kind of sucks because I thought that would be a nice because he's kind I of like did. a big slot guy. Exactly, uh, he's big strong. Would have been perfect. But yeah, I think a chart. I mean, Chark's also kind of an outside guy. Same with Lazard, but I feel like that's a possibility. Um, Paris Campbell yeah. could be a good slot guy. I mean, to Hardman. some extent, it's, I don't. I don't want an Allen Lazard. But if you're on this list, if you rattle off the next four or five guys below Lazard, you can make an argument for all of them. You know, they all like Darius Slayton, yeah. Jarvis Landry. He he security blanket. Darius Slayton. He's a plus athlete with some good. You know, some really good like years ahead of him. Um, McCole Hardman, great athlete, familiarity with fields. As long as the price is right, and if you're paying like you see here, like anywhere from that five to eight million dollar range, these kind of yeah. all make sense. But I made a I made a thread about this last week. Uh, you know, the Bears are really only going to fill about three more spots from the wide receiver group. There's no real top end talent in the free agent pool, so unless it's a trade, you should really be expecting the best receiver moves in the off season to come through the draft. Yeah, agree. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they might like Paris Gamble, Nicole Hardman, Darius Lane, all three of those guys are kind of the same tier. And, and if they're your fourth wide receiver, you're, you're going to be fine about that. If you sign one of those guys and you expect them to make an impact like you did with Byron Pringle, then th then we're in trouble. If yeah. uh, but, but we'll see. Um, all right. Uh, we'll just quickly do interior offensive linemen because sure. I want to get to the defense and I, we want to do uh, uh, the uh, mock offseason. Uh, for free yeah. agency, at least. So uh, Isaac Zumalo, I think, would be a great pick. Obviously, he comes from the Ian Cunningham, the, yeah. from the Eagles. So Ian Cunningham is very familiar there, fits the scheme. I think he plays – not. and the nice thing about him, too, is he plays a lot of different positions. He played left guard, right guard. I think he played some tackle early on in his career. Um, so he's a guy you can kind of move around. I think he would be a really nice fit for them. Yep. Um, anyone else on the interior? Ethan Posick, I know, gets uh, kind of – Brought up a lot uh, when talking about the Bears. Uh, he had a really good year last year. Uh, he's gotten better every year, so that maybe that's some someone they could sign. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think to some extent the way to look at this is like uh, they'll probably go with people that fit the mold, so long mm -hmm. athletes that are maybe not so tall, not so heavy. Um, and two, yeah. they'll probably be looking for people with a little bit of um, – uh, flexibility, like you said, ability to play maybe more than one position. And that's probably true of a lot of these interior linemen, especially going from like a guard on either side to the center. But that'll probably be what the look is. I, d I don't imagine that, th like, I don't think that any of these guys are very flashy signings, but there's definitely yeah. pro one, if not maybe two starters to be found on the interior offensive line this offseason. And I'd be stunned if one of them isn't from free agency. I think mm -hmm. Ciamalo, like you, Ciamalo, like you said, um, he's a guy that I think probably – I've had pinned as a guy I'd be surprised if the Bears don't pursue, especially because he, he's got that flexibility and he's that modern style of football, a better pass, pass blocker than he is run blocker. And yeah. we'll get into this more, but I think you'd agree it's probably a little easier to run block for J Justin Fields than it is for some other people. Um, for sure. But, like, yeah, Pochitz makes a lot of sense. I think um, if you scroll down, there's a uh, – um, see if I can. I need to refresh my memory. No, I know there is. Um, David Edwards could make some sense. Uh, he's not, he had a good year a couple oh, of Andre years ago. Dillard. Andre right. Dillard. Yeah. Yep. Another Eagles guy. So, another guy that Ian Cunningham is very familiar with. 
first former first round pick really hasn't done much uh in the pros uh but maybe he's super athletic so maybe you can kind of maybe there's still a little bit left of the tank that you can get out yeah. of him uh, if you give him a chance to start so yeah I, I mean i think that's a perfect signing you're obviously not signing him to come in and start you're you're signing him you're giving the, him the opportunity to compete for a just starting job but you're yeah. not just handing him anything so i think that's a, that would be a great signing um, and again, that's a signing that allows you to kind of go best player available when you get to the draft. Um, Funny you know, enough, I mean, there's uh, there's two players in this free agency named Connor McGovern. <laughs> yeah, and they're both offensive linemen, correct? I know. The one from the uh, Jets, though, is I think one that if the Bears decided to go with, I think it would actually be an all right addition to the team. So not yeah. this Connor McGovern. Screw this Connor McGovern. He, he'd be all right. There needs yeah. to be there. They need to add two or three pieces to the interior offensive oh, yeah. line in the offseason, without a doubt, just for competition purposes. But I would expect that it would be something like a Siamalo or like a Pochich. And if not, you can expect, expect to see them hit it hard in the draft. Well, you probably would either way, but those would probably be the only people you'd, you'd see uh, picked up that would be starters. Agreed. Yeah. And I also wouldn't rule out like a. Michael Schofield type signing, like a guy who's just signed for Dude, a vet minimum, can, basically just get some. That is a guy I totally don't want to let hit free agency. I love Michael Schofield. I, I thought, thought he played well at times for for a backup. You know, one hundred percent. And he's another guy that like totally fits that mold of the modern player. He's a, he is a he someone I think can sign Michael Schofield this year and have a completely adept um, NFL pass blocking guard on their team. For sure, one hundred percent. All right, oh. the next big position, let's get to the defense because we want to get to uh, the mock yeah. offseason. So interior defensive defenders, obviously the Bears need to sign one of these guys. It's kind of similar to offensive tackle. You kind of expect them to sign one of these big guys. Jerron Payne got franchised, so unfortunately you can't sign him. But there's still a lot of good options. Javon Hargrave on the older side, but, prob- but like obviously the PFF ranks him third overall in free agency. Great pass rusher, good run defender too. Um, again, a little older, but I think he still fits what they want. Perfect example of a three technique. Dalvin Tomlinson is a guy I really like. He's more of a nose tackle, a shade nose tackle, a one technique. So, um, But they need both. So it's not like you they need one or the other. They need both those things. So I think both those guys are good options. Draymond Jones, three. he's the three technique. Same with Zach Allen. Both are really good pass rushers. Uh, Draymond Jones might be one of the better interior pass rushers in football. Yeah. So – a lot of different directions they go here. Anyone that you're specifically looking at or hoping for? The first two guys you mentioned are like two guys. You said uh, the Bears need both. And in my head, I went, yeah, the Bears need both of those guys. <laughs> go sign, I would hate that. Go sign Javon Hargrave and go sign Dalvin Tomlinson and then draft two more interior defense alignment in the draft and just let those guys battle and compete for the next three years. They're all, like, yeah. I know the Dalvin Tomlinson and Javon Hargrave are getting on the older side, but to some extent, defensive linemen age a little better than most positions in the NFL. Um, Javon Hargrave, I, I feel like we've been talking about it a lot, but this is a big thing for polls is building a team that looks like the modern NFL. And Javon Hargrave is your modern NFL DT. He's not huge, but he's got good size, good athleticism, and he can rush the passer. And the reason I think a lot of people are excited about him as an opportunity for the Bears is over the last three years, he's been consistent at it. Some of the people yeah. that people will be talking about in this offseason – are people that started to flash being a really great NFL player in their last year before their like their first big contract, and you know that we've we've been on the, the end of trying to do that before and, and getting burned. You kind of want a player that's shown at least for the reason you're signing them that they've been consistently good at that, or at least improving at it year over year. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the stats that I highlighted here, if you can see, but since 2020, Hargrave is third in pass rush grade. By PFF and third and pass rush run right behind only Aaron Donald and Chris. Yeah, Jones. that's so. What more? I mean, do what you else? Need? You, <laughs> what else do you need? Like three? I, they project a three-year deal, eighteen million per year. Uh, that's obviously a huge number. Um, but if you put and he, yeah, he's thirty. But if you put mo- most or all of that guaranteed money in the first two years, who cares? He's gonna be exactly. fine in two years. And, and I know people might be like, well, we, maybe we're not competing in two years. So what? You still have maybe you are. <laughs> you don't know that. And yeah, you don't 100%. know if you're gonna compete until you sign good players. So I feel like that would be absolutely fine. I would love that signing. Um, Delvin Tomlinson, you could do the same thing. Another three years, obviously less money because he doesn't provide as much pass rush, but he's still really good. And I think he is a better pass rusher than he's given credit for. And yep. he's just going to be solid against the run, which he still be guys who can stop the run as well. I mean, we saw it last year where the Bears just couldn't stop anyone. Um, I do think the hot, probably the higher upside is Draymond Jones. I mean, obviously 
Draymond Jones probably won't ever get to that level that Javon Hargrave is at, but he's four years younger, so yep. you can have him for a longer period of time. So I do feel like he has provides more upside for them. Uh, so that's definitely a direction they could go. Yeah. Uh, Draymond Jones went to my high school, so I'm kind of rooting they went rooting for him <laughs> to sign him. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, right. He was. We graduated the same year. I'm also 26. So uh, anyway, so are you kidding me? This guy was in your graduate. <laughs> Draymond Jones was in your no. graduating class. No, he was not. I am much older than Draymond Jones. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it'd be cool. Uh, I do think he he's perfect. I mean, he's again like you you talk about the modern three technique. Like yep. it's Draymond Jones. He's yeah. not a great run defender. You can see from his his grades. He had a 51.8 grade last year, but he yeah. was. I don't know, I'm he sure did, they have some stats. He did what in people here. want for like the most important aspect of the game right now. Yeah, I, I mean, Draymond Jones is someone I think I've seen tied to the Bears the most during the process. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears threw a bag, like a, a lot of money at him. My only thing is it feels like for some reason his value has been really inflated over the last two or three months. I've seen reports yeah. that, you know, when he hits free agency, he's going to get somewhere close to $20 million. And like, listen, I – I, we've said it, you know, we have money to spend, but when you hear that Draymond Jones is going for 20 million, it's like, man, for what? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, people are, you pay million or something. It, if you can rush the passer, you're going to get paid. That's just the way it is. And he can true. rush the passer for sure. I think if they want to go with like a cheaper option, Zach Allen, I think is kind of like a, a tier below that, but still really good across the board. Yeah. Um, actually a little bit younger, but you can get him for a little bit less. Yeah. Um, he had had kind of a career year and a contract year, but yep. he might be a guy who kind of is a little bit of a late bloomer. I think he was either a first round pick or an early second round pick. I yeah, he was, and he was also a guy that like had a really, really, really good combine. I was thinking yeah. that you know, I, I think the Bears will be chips on the table for Hargrave. I would honestly at this point be surprised if they don't get him. I'd be disappointed if they don't get him. The Bears need yeah. someone like that on the defensive line. But I think Dalvin Tomlinson, there's a chance that he probably gets a pretty good market for himself and the Bears can't squeeze him too. And I thought, you know, if they can't do that, someone like uh, Zach Allen would be an awesome addition. I think he's an ascending player. Yeah. I also think, I mean, Larry Ogunjobi, we, they obviously are interested in him. So maybe they go back to that route. I also there's think Sheldon... Uh, Sh no way. No way. Yeah, who knows? I also think Sheldon Rankins is a good option too. Another kind of a three technique. Yeah. If you miss out, if maybe if you... Miss out on the top guys, you can sign Sheldon Rankins, and he's going to be a solid role player for you. Yeah, I mean, to some extent, too, like, once you get into that 5 to $6 million range deal, like, you kind of give pace the green light to take flyers on people. It's the people that oh, you're yeah. spending Hell double yeah. digits on where it's like, okay, you need to – are we really spending $20 million a year here on Draymond Jones? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's do edge defenders real quick. There's really not – I think we could probably do this quickly because I'm not sure they're really going to be targeting anyone high here. Uh, Marcus Davenport's probably the best. Uh, yep. He's high risk, high reward, though. You know, two year, in 2021, he was probably one of the better pass rushers in all of football. Yep. He's been injured pretty much every year there. I don't think he's ever played in 16 games. I don't think he's ever played in like 13 games. Um, but when he is healthy, he's very, very good. So high risk, high reward there. I go again, keep going back and forth. I could see them signing him. I could see them passing on him. I don't know. Um, J.D. Van Clowney is always available in free agency every yep. year, so he's a nice guy to have. He's I didn't realize you know, how well he's graded and how like much more he's at like every year. He's just solid like every Dude, year. The he's thing with Clowney, you know what you're gonna get. I was about to say the thing with Clowney and the reason I'm actually totally okay with the Bears offering him some money is that you get a rock solid floor with Clowney of a good yeah. athlete, good run defender, good competitor. You know, can get you maybe five or six sacks every year. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you just you know where you're getting, and there's something to be said about that. And if he is going for, oh, just a one-year contract, I think that's perfect because the Bears yeah. can get a stopgap. Then you can draft a guy, an edge in the second round, and they can kind of you know rotate in with with him and then take over full time uh, next yeah. year. Arden Key is a guy that gets that's getting some hype. Um, he's got kind of gotten better every year, so he's kind of a guy on the rise. Yep. Only twenty. Only 27 ish. Um, so that could be a good kind of under the radar setting. Ogonia Okoronkwo, kind of probably a better fit for 3 4. Uh, but a guy I, I really liked coming out of college um, and a guy who's who's proven to be a good pass rusher in the NFL um, and actually not a bad run defender either. Yeah. Gakwu, Le Leonard Floyd reunion. Yeah, maybe. you know what's funny is <laughs> you and I both have the same feeling about Gakwe. We're not yeah. in on him. 
Listen, yeah, I, just I think a lot of people up. see it. He's a pass rusher that turns his pressures into sacks at a really good percentage, which means that he gets a lot of sacks. Um, yeah. I don't think he fits the mold of what we're yeah. looking for. Uh, I also just, I honestly just don't think that he's, I, listen, he's only 28 years old, so it's it's not like he's over the hill, but I just kind of feel like maybe he's never been the player that maybe was built up to be sack numbers can kind of do that for someone. 100%. I just, especially as a, especially as a team that's getting a little young, I know people will say, Hey, like, well, if, if it's not pass rush numbers, then why are you guys so into Javon Hargrave? It's just that it's not, it feels like because of how well Yannick Ngakwe has over his career converted pressures into sacks that it's, it's, he hasn't disrupted the game as much as the sack numbers would let you think. Yeah. I, I agree with you. He's overhyped. And I think, he had a really good like rookie year, like really really good rookie year, and he's been kind of living off that for the rest of his career. Uh, he's not a bad player. I mean, he can definitely rush the passer, but I think he is more of a situational pass rusher than a every down defensive end. And if they wanted to go that route, I'd be fine with it. But he doesn't really move the needle too much for me. I'd still want them to draft an edge guy high. Okay, let's keep I moving. Will say, um, well, then, uh, before we sneak off there, we it'll yeah, come yeah. up when we do the. Uh the free agency but charles menahe was a guy okay yeah i i agree with that with, with him that as well the personal guy who could play inside and out i think yeah. they'll like that uh we're gonna skip linebackers because the bears are gonna sign bobby okariki and we could just that's all we have to say about that right like there's yeah. nothing else we have to say there um i do i do want to go to cornerback though real quick because i think my guy who i really want the bears to sign is jamel dean because i think he's a really good corner he's probably one of the he's probably one of the best non uh non-quarterback in free agency this year i mean you can see it he, he was the 10th cornerback last year 20th two years ago 12th th three years ago you're getting a rock solid quarterback cornerback one and you know those guys are not always available in free agency rarely available in free agency he's only 26 if you need a cornerback to him and jalen johnson and you have kyle gordon in the slot that's a very good cornerback room um you know, it kind of gives you some leeway too with Jalen Johnson. He's on the last going into a contract year. You can kind of let him play that out and see what he does this year uh, with a better pass rush and everything. And if he balls out, you can franchise tag him or maybe sign him to a contract. And if he doesn't, well, that's okay. You can let him go and get a comp pick because you have Jamel Dean. Yep. So I really think that's that's the way I, I'm hoping they go. I agree. I think he's one of the crown jewels of free agency. He, like you said, he's young. He's, he's a, kind of another guy like um, – uh, clowny and that not not like any play style comparisons, but just that you know what you're getting with them. They have such a low, mm -hmm. they have such a high floor that uh, you can kind of say, "Hey, if this is the worst that we get from them, we're still doing okay." And I think that's true of Jamel Dean. He's shown it so far in his career. The only thing is, is it just we've talked about this before. Is that you know where there's smoke, there's fire, and there has been remarkably little smoke between the Bears yeah. and Jamel Dean. There's been nobody saying that it's a natural fit. There's been no one saying there's communications there there's been nobody tying them there which means that nobody that's around the situation has heard anything about it yeah i mean i haven't really heard anything about jamel dean attached to any team but that doesn't mean it's not out there i obviously don't are more in yeah. the bears uh but yeah I, I do think it's interesting i i polls mentioned in his press conferences one of his press conferences which one it was that yeah. cornerback was a pretty position cornerback uh, offensive line edge rusher the three ones he said and we, we haven't been i haven't seen us connected to any corners um so i don't know maybe they really like the guys that they have maybe they have uh guys and they want to draft a guy i'm not sure but i i just think it makes so much sense you have the money you front load the contract and you get a guy who's a cornerback one and you could just I know. put on a put on a guys on a team's best wide receiver you're in a you're in a division with justin jefferson like I, I like I like Jalen Johnson. I don't trust him to shadow Jalen uh, Justin Jefferson. I would kind of trust agree. Jamel Dean doing that. Um, I also, um, I also think Jamel Dean is even though he's fifth here, I think he's super underrated because you know the Buccaneers have been good the last few years, but everyone was just fo so focused on Tom Brady that they forgot that their defense really carried them, and Jamel Dean was a a big reason for that. So I think 100%. that's all right. Uh, and then you know, Rocky Sin might be a guy that they look at doing former Colts player. So he played yep. with Eber Flus. Be a, I mean, obviously that's not the same as Jamel Dean, but you get a solid corner who can compete with Kendall Vildor, probably beat out Kendall Vildor for that starting spot if they want to go that way. Or maybe you you um, pair him with a rookie, a yeah. second or third on draft pick, and 
let them compete for a starting job there. So they got some options there. Uh, we'll see what they do. Yep. Yeah, I think Rock, like you said, I think Rocky Sin uh, makes uh, makes a ton of sense for the Bears. Not only does he have that, um, does he have that uh, uh, Eberflus connection? I think he's going to fit that second wave, a little bit less expensive thing uh, kind of vibe that we've seen polls go after. And not only that, but his best work, I think, has been done um, uh, at wide. And I think that that's kind of where our biggest hole is at the moment. I think to some extent we're going to see Kyler Gordon kick inside. That's just a gut feeling. Yeah. Um, because it's where we've – we've because of uh, Kimball Vildor, it's where we saw the most of them at least when we had everybody healthy last year. So I would imagine that that's probably where they have – I mean, it could be that they believe that uh, uh, Gordon's an outside guy, but for the moment it looks like that they're going to be trying to find yeah. themselves an outside corner this offseason. And that's mm-hmm. why I think, uh, you know, Rocky Sin makes a lot of sense. For sure. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think Gordon should absolutely play in the slot. I mean, he's he's physical. His best – the best tape he had this year was in run defense, and you need your slot corner to be able to to help out in the run game, and I think that's where he excels. So I don't yeah. see why you would want to put him on the outside. Um, but, yeah, I do think, you know, signing any of these guys for as an outside corner allows – Kyle Gordon to just focus on slot corner and not have to go back and forth, which I think maybe hurt him a little bit, especially early on. Yeah. All right. What do you say we get into the, the actual uh, mock off season? Let's Um, do it. So we do uh, like, are we doing, are we going to do what we think's best? Are we going to do what we think they're going to do? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. What do you want to do? We can go either way. Let's do it. If we were the GMs. We're the gym. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Let's fix the bears. Fixing the bears. Let's do it. All right. So we got we got about 15, 20 minutes still. I think that's gonna be plenty of time. We got uh, uh bucket stats, uh uh mock off season spreadsheet here. If you don't if you're not familiar with this, go follow Bucket Stats on Twitter. He's very a great fan follow. Very cool dude. Uh he put together this spreadsheet, which is really awesome. You can you can go through all the cuts, you can go through free agency, you can, you can enter your draft picks it, it calculates the you know the calf space for you it's really really cool yeah uh, so this is what we're going to use and we'll, we'll probably just go down, down the list so let's just start at the top with center i mean uh, i think before i think as far as money allocation let's go sign the yeah. guys we know we're going to sign that's fair let's let's go to offensive tackle first because i think that's going to be one of the first who are we doing ones to sign so who are we doing so we're, I we're, think we're, we're doing Taylor, guys i was just going to say if we're doing what we're doing is i think Jawan taylor we want to pass the ball uh, Let's do we're it. tired of running the ball. Let's go Put with him on the Taylor right there. Love so, it. yeah, so you can see it, it calculated. They they have him as a nine, almost $10 million contract. He's de- I think he's definitely getting more than that, though. Yeah. Um, I think he's – but we'll leave that in there for now uh, and just kind of keep that in mind. Perfect. We love it. Juwan Taylor, he's going to naturally kick to that right side. We got our tackles mm-hmm. for the next four years. It's going to be Juwan Taylor, or at least for three years. It'll be Juwan Taylor and ja- Braxton Jones. I know a lot of people were saying, go get yourself Orlando Brown. He's the best tackle in the market. We have the money. It makes sense, but are you going to go spend $22 million to force Braxton Jones, who probably had one of the better rookie tackle seasons in a long time to force him out of his natural position. Jawan Taylor is going to kick into the right side. Everybody stays home. He does what we want of our tackle. And like we said, if he's bad at running the ball, there's a really good chance that he's going to have a better job run blocking when the defense in front of him has to worry about two rushers each time. Yeah, hundred percent. That's perfect. Yeah. You got your right tackle. You got your left tackle. I think that's, if that's what we're doing, if that's what, if we're doing what we would do, that's definitely a no brainer. Um, right there so let's lock that in all right do you want to go to uh interior uh, defensive tackle i'd I say i'd say next. me and you or javon hargrave guys as well yeah i think i mean yeah i think so i i just think it makes sense he gives you know rushing the passers what gets you paid and it be, and it gets you paid because it's valuable and that's it's what the bears the, need. they have the ian cunningham connection Got the Ian Cunningham connection. They have the most cap space. There would be a lot of people who won't be able to forge up on Hargrave. That's not going to be And again, issue. it is like, I think you can't really sell short how big of a need it is. That is, yeah. if you're alive today, that was the worst pass rushing Chicago Bears team you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And it that's saying terrible. something. I've seen some bad ones. Yeah. So, la- I mean, what was it? Last year, our most sacks was our rookie safety. Yeah, right? that's that can't happen. I mean, uh, what else do you need to know? Javon Hargrave, 
the only two names that are his peers in the last three years for pass rushing is Chris Jones and Aaron Donald. Is that good? It's good company. <laughs> is that good? It's, it seems pretty good. I don't. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but that seems add good him to, to me. the team. We got him. Do we, we want to go? Second? I was just gonna say, do we want to add a second? I think if they, d- you know, I think we kind of want to like do a little bit what we would do, but like realistic. Like realistic. If we if we sign Javon Hargrave, are they all? Would we also sign Dalvin Tomlinson? That's a lot of money to tie up in two D tackles. Well, now we're not saying it's impossible, but just for as far yeah. as, you know, keeping things realistic, I think me and you, same page. Do we want to throw like a Zach Allen in? Zach Allen, I think, would be a good one. Uh, the only thing about that is like Zach Allen and Javon Hargrave probably both, you know, More play similar. three technique. Are you going to, yeah, yeah I okay. guess, he, are you going to rotate in? I don't know if there is another really, I don't know if there's another really good nose tackle we want to sign. Maybe like a Derek Noddy is a good run defender. You could do a uh, Sheldon Rankins. Sheldon Rankins. Puna Ford is a, is more of a nose tackle. I've seen his name like, thrown around a lot. Yeah, I, I kind of like Puna Ford. He's not very good, <laughs> but I mean he's not he's not bad. I, I shouldn't say that, but he's mean. really just like a you know kind of just an average starter. But I think if you go, if you sign both those two guys, you got you know, you got a nose tackle, you got a three technique. It does not prevent you from upgrading both yep. uh, nose tackle in the draft. Maybe you draft a Keanu Benton in the second or third round, yep. and you get him as a starter. So I like that. I think we'll, cool. we'll just go with that for right. now. We got. We got sixty million left, and we'll also say that let's probably leave ourselves anywhere from fifteen to twenty because we can expect a commit, maybe something like a sure. Mooney, maybe even Jalen Johnson to happen this off season, and we still have a rookie class to sign, a rookie class that's going to include a lot of picks. Yeah, so right, that's a good idea. Pro- I'd say we probably only have about forty to forty-five million more to assign. So, yeah, with that, we right. say center. Well, I was just going to say if we're doing what we would do. I already talked about it. I'm signing Jamel Dean, so I'm just yeah, gonna plug that it. in. We can take him out if if we're running low on cash or something, but I'm gonna plug him in for now. Um, do we? So yeah, do you want to go center? I mean, yes. I think it makes more sense just from the way the draft board works. I'm in. I I have some centers I love on the draft board. I think you do mm-hmm. too. And there's mm-hmm. a couple of guards that I think if they're there, they make sense. But after like Steve Avia or. Skaronsky or even um, uh, John Gaines, who, who just popped off in the draft. He, because of that, I've, I've gone back and I, he's a guy that I think is is a modern guard. But other than those guys, I don't think that the the draft offers as much top end guard talent as it does uh, center talent. So I I'd think it would make more sense to try and address guard and free agency. Okay. So do you do you think in Sumalo or someone else? Sumalo makes a lot of sense to me because if Same the board here. falls away where you don't get a center, then you can ask him to do that too. Mm-hmm. Another guy I just saw on this list, I think they they were uh, connected to Wes Schweitzer a little bit. It would be more of a he can play guard, he can play center, kind of a veteran guy. So I'm gonna plug him in there too, just as cool. like a backup. Yep. Kind of fill yeah, a hole yep. there. And we've heard, he, yeah, you know, for depth. We've heard from pretty much everybody that knows the nose bears that it's going to be all about the trenches this off season. So adding Absolutely. multiple people to that position doesn't make it not as crazy. Are me and you Bobby Okereke fans? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I, I, I'm not going to, I can't have it really watch any, you know, besides just watching some Colts games on TV. So as I can't, uh, I think, I think he's fine. So like, I don't know if we plug him in, how much they're going to, we're getting close to our money at that point. We only have a few. We only have a few more. But I do think they're they are going to sign a, a linebacker. He's a little cheaper than T.J. Edwards, cheaper than Tremaine Edmonds. I, I think that's fair. I think we can plug in the Okereke. Okay, let's do it. Feel good about that? Yeah, one hundred percent. There's no doubt that you know uh, Iberflus is pounding the table for him. He's he's a top performer. Then he, he he's familiar with him. He was good in his scheme. Um, yeah, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Pair him with uh, pair him with. Uh, Sanborn and a rookie, and that's it's that, yeah. you're you're totally happy with that room. I think you know me and you, like we said earlier, the linebacker position is kind of like that running back position, and that you know, yeah. if, if for whatever reason it is, teams that are winning aren't exactly allocating a whole lot of money to that position. So it's something to you know think about. But by the same merit, if you're a head coach and a GM in your second year, you want to get people in the room that have the identity of the team you want, and you know for a fact that Eberflus knows Okureke fits that mold for sure so what do we got 27 million 27 million. we got we a few get... more million left any i mean do we want to put like nico hardman in there i would say well, there's no there's no doubt we don't add at least one edge 
we got to make sure True. we have money for one edge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's go to edge first then. We can always so what are you thinking? Arden Key, Amenahu, you mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say Amenahu and Arden Amenahu. Key are kind of in that same range where it's like really good upside, show that they can excel the things that you want, not too expensive. But yeah. are they going to go with, you know, it's it's which one of them are they going to do? Are they, or are they going to go yeah. the high floor for like a one year deal on a Jadavian Clowney? Or do they say, hey, this is one of those positions that we said is an important position to rock. Are we going to go after my Marcus Davenport? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. I, I, I think they can go a lot of different directions here. I don't really love any of these edge guys, so I, I probably wouldn't spend a whole bunch of money on them. But I think an Arden Key makes sense. Yeah. Especially if it's like an, an $8 million, $10 million Dude, contract. Like, I think that makes get, sense. I think Arden Key is a great choice here. If you want to get excited about Arden Key, he's a young player, great athlete. He's gotten better every year. And his best football, the best football he's played, was the last nine weeks of last season. He really yeah. came on as a great pass, one of the better pass rushers in the league down the stretch. Yeah, he's getting better and better. So I think you kind of. You, you bet on the upside there, and, and yeah. at worst case, maybe you get a a, a, a solid starter. I mean, look at that. Do we want to do we want to add a water? I mean, I feel like they're going to sign at least one wide receiver. So uh, yeah, let's see if we, we add a uh, where'd that meet? Where'd meet the Harbin go? There's a lot of smoke. Nicole Harbin makes sense. He tweeted at Justin Fields today about it. So yeah, I mean that's not one that much money million. to throw him in. Yeah, one, one million give me sure. four McCall Harbins. <laughs> yeah, so we have eighteen million dollars here then. So I think that's pretty fair. I mean, I think I mean this is might be a little bit extreme with Jamel Dean and Hargrave and like and Jawan Taylor. That's that's I mean, I think Jawan Taylor is gonna easily it get more is than extreme, million, but... but by the same merit, there are teams right now that are clamoring to get 18 million in cap space. Yeah. And we've signed all those dudes this year and still have that. Yeah. The other thing is we we didn't do any cuts, so we didn't cut Cody Whitehair, uh, which we would, but if we're sounding two offensive guards here, so we have to save some money there. So that gets us back over that twenty million. I'm not. Um, I, I, you know what? I've uh, I've come around on Cody White here. I want Cody. You're Whitehair. keeping Cody White? Right, yeah, whatever. Cut, I mean, if he's a backup, I don't care. Yeah, and like we said too, like I think uh, someone like a Michael Schofield, we didn't do it here, makes a lot of sense. But the reason, if I could sell you on Cody White here, would say he was. I think he was playing really good in the system when he was healthy. He got hurt and didn't look like himself. He's only yeah, like fair. 31. If he comes back healthy, I think low key. If you look at some of the the mic dubs, I think him and Justin Fields have a really good relationship. He's a tenured bear. I don't think that there's any reason why he doesn't get a shot to start next year. I don't believe he'll be the starter. I just don't believe he'll get cut. Yeah, I wonder if he'd be a guy who's a, it would be interested in just like a restructure of his contract because uh, yeah, he's getting paid. Like he's getting paid too much. Uh, yeah. But I could see them being like, "We hey, look, you know, we want to keep you. You just but we need you to take a pay cut." And he seems like a guy who might be willing to do that since he's been a bear for his entire career. He might not want to move his family. He'd be like, "Yeah, I'll take a little bit of a pay cut to yeah. stay in Chicago." And like on that human note too, my only thing is is that we've cut, you know, we cut Al Qadim Muhammad, who's a guy that has a relationship with Ibrahim Flus. Um, yeah, and they weren't scared to do that. Uh, White hair still on the team. Mm -hmm. We can we can designate another post June, which actually, if if you post June white hair, you get another five million. We don't need to wait. You could do him the veteran service and cut him now with a post June and let him go explore free agency. And we true. haven't because of that. I'd imagine he's gonna be here for the for if we cut him in maybe the summer, but I, even then, I doubt it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know the the human element of it. You most times veterans like that, if you plan on cut them, you cut them early so that they can get a contract somewhere else. So I think that's a very good point. The fact that they haven't might point that they want to keep it. They either want to keep him or, I mean, I, I think they either will keep him or they, they cut him like in training camp. You know, yeah. Like that. If, if you draft someone in like the seventh round and find out you have a gem, it's a little yeah. easier to go to go to Cody and say, Hey man, fuck. There's, there's, only, yeah. there's only this many spots on the roster. Right. Like we wanted to keep you, but this guy, Beat you out. I mean, it, it is no, not only did this guy beat you out, but you're you're ten million dollars more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Uh, I mean, let's look at it. What do we got? We got we added McCole Hardman. So now going yeah, in, so going Hardman into the off season, our receivers would be McCole Hardman, Claypool, Mooney, and Valus Jones. You know, you, okay. you add one or two good rookies in there. That's not so bad. It's not so bad. You, I mean, I feel like if you go in there, you have to draft a wide receiver in rounds one or two. I agree. In my opinion, you got to get someone. 
JSN, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, Quinn Johnson, someone like that yep. to, to kind of take over. Uh, we got Juwan Taylor at right tackle, Braxton Jones at left. Welcome to the future. So our, our, our offensive line, starting off with the line would be Braxton Jones, Isaac Ciumalo. Um, We don't have our center yet, but we're thinking about drafting him. Could be Ciumalo. Uh, we're hoping could be Ciumalo. Is. Could be Schweitzer. Could be Lucas Patrick. Hopefully we get someone better. Tevin Jenkins at right tackle, Jawan Taylor at – or Tevin Jenkins at right guard, Jawan Taylor at right tackle. That's starting to become a semblance of an offensive line. If you get one or two rookies in there who, who play early on, that yep. could be okay. 100%. Bobby Okereke at, at linebacker. He knows the system. Just makes sense. Pair uh, Jack Sanborn. You got your Mike. You got your Will. You got Javon Hargrave and Arden Key rushing the passer. I'm not sure about Puna Ford. We kind of just threw him in there. But you got two guys who are going to be able to rush the passer. Uh, you're – Obviously, probably going to pick an edge player and an d- interior def- defensive lineman in the draft. Fairly and you got Jamel high. Dean locking down on the outside uh, with Jalen Johnson. That becomes probably you know one of the better cornerback duos in the in the NFL. I maybe not one of the better ones, but a very solid yeah, cornerback. I mean, duo. who who else do you point to? I mean, I I know, I know. especially considering coverage is such a you know. Y- a, a, a cornerback that's amazing can fully have 10 bad games in a year and just look like a bad cornerback yeah. any given year. But on a, on a snap to snap basis, man, if you have Jalen Johnson and Jamel Dean, like pick your poison. If Jalen Johnson yeah. is your second worst corner, that's a tough, that's a tough secondary. Yeah. I mean, I'd say I feel much better about Jalen Johnson as cornerback two than cornerback one. I mean, it, I think signing a Jamel Dean helps Jalen Johnson too, because he gets to go up against the wide receiver two. Um, I know obviously, obviously they're not shattering it, each other all the time, but he gets more matchups with lesser wide receivers, so that's going to help him too. Um, so I, don't, I just I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here, but I think that's a perfect fit. Yeah, and then that you know that leaves you some flexibility. You don't need to go diving for a defensive tackle. You have some guys that you know. Yeah. You don't need to get that star. You don't need to get a. I would say looking at this. The biggest need going into the draft would be try and add yourself a guy that can be an alpha at the edge position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing about this, the way we've done this here, you kind of set yourself where you still need a wide receiver. You still need an offensive lineman. You still need an interior defensive lineman. You still need an edge. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't I don't think there's really a way to attack for agency where you can fill all of those holes. Yeah. Um, so you're probably gonna leave the draft with still a hole. I mean, just kind of it's just the way it is. Hopefully you maybe you get a gem in the later rounds, but you can't really bank on that. Um no, I mean so the Bears, have, is what the Bears have probably the least at least last year, probably the least competitive football roster in the NFL. Yeah. So you can't expect, especially with half of the offseason with just being free agency, you cannot expect to fill all the holes. Right. We might not even go in, and we're, we'll probably go into next season with a couple of positions where it's like, Ugh, you know, yeah. but you know, you know it, something like this probably won't happen exactly, but it's something mm-hmm. like that is totally possible. We're going to be leaving with 18 million for restructuring, for re-signing, and for a draft class. We could have got more aggressive, like we could have said, "Hey, throw Dalvin Tomlinson in there." We decided yeah. someone like a Puna Ford or someone like an Arden Key over like a Marcus Davenport to keep it more realistic. The, it really just does go to show that the Bears like can really like go and make some crazy moves in free agency. Yeah, I mean, I expect I expect two big signings. I would say two big signings, and then a bunch of other sm- medium medium ones and a few small ones is what I expect. Would you so say like it, something like an Okereke would be like a medium signing? I would say Okereke would be yeah medium. I'd put him in the medium. He's definitely not a bit. Well, I mean, I don't know what contract he's going to get. He the, the reports were, were pretty high on him. Um, and if that's what he's going to get paid, I think you just, I mean, it, it is nice to have a scheme fit and a guy who knows the system, but you also can't be throwing around money stupid. So if he's know. getting $8 million a year, fine. If he's getting $14 million a year, I'd probably look somewhere else. And but, how many contexts can you say $8 million a year is a, medi- a medium contract? Medium, what yeah, medium, medium contract, contract, please. <laughs> yeah. Where, where can I get a small contract for myself? I'll take that. Um, yeah, so I, th- I expect two big ones. Like and when I say big, I mean like a Javon Hargrave, Jamal, Jawan Taylor, big, yeah. Jamel Dean, big, and then these other guys. I would say like Puna Ford, small, Arden Keys, medium, yep. be uh medium. So here, but, here you'd small. say we probably have three big signings. Jamel yeah, it, Hargrave and Jawan Taylor. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if that. Ju- we do know that. Polls is a little bit more conservative on the free agency side, but I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if three is the number that we come away with. Three three contracts that are, you know, uh, like 
at least double digits. Yeah, my my the re- my reason for that is because I think they saw what happened last year when they didn't sign a lot of free agents and they saw how bad it was and they said they're going to say themselves we cannot go into next year with they, they with saw that everybody. little of depth. It's they the saw everybody issue. clowning the Jags for throwing all that money at them and they just watched yeah. them walk into the playoffs and go, "Oh, wait, 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 wait." <laughs> yeah. So I think I think they're going to prioritize depth. So I, I would say I, I I'm going to I think two, but you know if they sign three, I would be, you know, completely shocked. But I think two big signings is kind of what to expect. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe also this weekend or you know Monday, Tuesday during the legal tampering period, maybe we get a draft pick trade. I'm guessing that's probably what, what's going to happen. So that's got to. There was an eye a out there, there was a lot of smoke about that earlier this week. It, it might have cooled down yeah. a little bit. I think uh, I think some of the dominoes falling in other places, like I think the Rogers move, and I think the yeah. Lamar Jackson thing, probably made some of those discussions where some people had to pull back and say, Hey, we kind of got to look at a lot of this stuff, despite the fact that everybody said that they pulled out of the Lamar Jackson thing, which is like, yeah. we can't, we cannot even open that can of worms where we're at time wise. <laughs> no, no, no. We could talk about that for like three hours, but I do think that does complicate it. I mean, teams it might say they have to do their due diligence. So yeah. we're going to pull back a little bit. We're going to entertain Lamar Jackson. We're going to see what the Packers are willing to trade exactly. for and Rogers. And then we'll come back to you. And I also think, just from like the other team's perspectives, that's just a good negotiating tactic. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, so, I think before that, it looked like maybe we would have got some clarity on that trade before the week was out. But, you know, now who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, my guess, my guess, I think something happens Monday or Tuesday. That's my Monday guess. Or, right before, yeah, new league year starts. Yeah, probably Monday, probably Monday before. So they have Tuesday. It's exciting, man. Later. They got to take us out of limbo, bro. I'm going to lose my mind. Dude, I can't do any more mock drafts not knowing where they're oh. picking. Just let me let me know where they're picking, and then I and then I can do more mock drafts. I know, yeah, dude. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm done doing mock drafts until I can do more real mock drafts. Right. I'm done done doing fake mock drafts. Now I want to do real mock <laughs> real ones. All right. We good? What do you think? That's not bad. I mean, that, if that was the Bears, if that's how they came out of free agency, man, you'd have to be positive about the way the Bears viewed their team. 100%, Ryan 100%. Poles, if you're watching. You know, listen, if you're willing to pay Bobby Okereke $7 million a year, <laughs> you take one-tenth of that, give half of it to me and Steve, and we'll jump on. Yeah. I'll work for, you know, 50 grand a year. So uh, seriously, I'll, whatever. First, year, first year, I'll work free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All it takes is having someone in the room banging the table for dudes like Juwan Taylor and dudes like Javon Hargrave. Exactly. All right, so I think uh, I think we're good here. So we'll we're, next week we'll obviously come on because we'll have ch- signings to talk about. Maybe the week after we come back here and then do the rest of the draft here with these free agents here, so we can kind of finish this mock off season. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be a nice thing to do. But we'll definitely be on next week. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not. We'll figure out when when, but definitely at least once uh, to talk about who they signed, what that means for the draft, everything like that. So make sure to stay tuned, like, subscribe, all that stuff, so you get notified when we go live. Uh, we, I will also be tweeting, you know, both of us will be tweeting, um, uh, next week, you know, our thoughts and, uh, as things unfold. So make sure yes, to follow us on Twitter, sir. like subscribe, and we'll talk to everyone next week. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Bear down. Bear down.